Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, R-D hyphen oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, it's uh, not a lot going on. It's kind of quiet. You know, we had a uh, holiday yesterday, and this is expiration week. Yes. Uh, but we, we got a little panic in the market. We can start off with chart one there. Okay. And then and, let's, uh, let's get, okay, get chart one up here. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Uh, anyhow, the bottom window is the three-day average of the trend. Next one up. Uh, next higher window is a two-day average of the trend. Uh, next one higher is a five-day average of the trend. And the top window is a 10-day average of the trend. And actually, on June 13th, which was last Thursday, actually one of them hit on June 12th. But anyhow, on June 13th, all three or four of those... Uh, uh, f um, four, four of them, yep. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, what I'm trying to say. You know, it's a three-day, two-day five-day and 10-day trend all gave bullish signals on June 13th, which was last Thursday, okay. Wednesday, Thursday. So anyhow, the market kind of popped up, and whatever panic happens, uh, let me uh, just, uh, step in here. But anyhow, a trend reading, one-day trend reading on the close of 1.2 or higher shows panic in the market. And the more days you get of panic in the market, the more solid that bottom becomes. And so that area I, I shaded in yes. pink there on that chart are the times when all four of those indicators, the, the two, three, five, and 10 day trend, all reach panic levels. So I'm thinking there's going to be a pullback next week. Normally you have expiration week, which normally an up week. The week after is using a mouth consolidation. But there's really no downside here, is my point of this whole thing. You know, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but around. No, no, I, I can see it. This is a great chart, Tim. I can see it. And folks, he has the arrows pointed, panic levels, support levels. And look on the other side of that so you can see where the spy was. When those panic levels come in, you didn't hit lower lows. So, no, I see what you're doing here. This is cool, man. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, you so, went, went sideways, you pulled back a bit, but you didn't hit lower lows, man. You just kept going higher. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you get so, you know, and if you pull back, usually it's in vicinity of those, uh, you know, can you hit the little bit inside? Yeah. But normally, the previous panic area, especially if you get five different or four different moving averages all coming in, in the same spot, that's quite a bit of short term, uh, even, you know, a 10 day uh, pattern. Uh, so, anyhow, you got to supply this support in general on the 540, which is not very far down from here. So, there could be a mild consolidation, and, but, that would be about it. So let's, let's look at the real short-term picture on page two. Okay. Uh, chart two, rather. So this kind of blows it up. I listed in blue there. Um, I see I thought it. I was a head and shoulders bottom fine. But anyhow, I listed in blue the days where the trend was 1.2 or higher. And you can kind of see what's going on there. So around that 540, maybe you can get down to 520. But, you know, you start hitting that air, pink area, you're going to find support because once you have a panic in an area, once you get back into it, it starts panicking again. Now, oh, that's a, cool. A trend okay. will get to 1.2 or higher again. And the market really has a hard time going down with a panic reading of, of, of 1.2 or higher. So if, it's, if that area is going to be support as it enters that uh, pink area again, the trend should start popping up to 1.2 or so, saying that, yeah, we're, you know, this is support. We're not going to go down. And uh, so, in a nutshell, I, I want to say also on the volume there, I got volume. We're up seven days in a row going into yesterday. To say most likely it's going to probably be a down day. And seven days in a, up in a row, predict the market will be higher, I think. And I forgot what exactly it is. But it's like 90% of the time it will be higher within five days. Okay. So, if we do pull back, chances are you're probably going to get panic in that. Uh, same zone, um, right? Yeah. Yeah, same zone. And uh, then from there, we'll probably start going up again. So, But next week could be a soft week. It, could, it kind of just may go quiet. But And, you know, folks, as, as Tim's talking about these trends, I mean, these were monster trends, man, last week. I mean, you know, I know, yeah. you know, Thursday gave you the best one. But Wednesday was, I have a closing trend of 2.12 on Wednesday. I have Tuesday 1.3, two, uh, yeah, Tuesday 1.3, Wednesday 2.1. 
then 1.3 and 1.3, those are, those are huge. So I can see what you're saying, that you can back down to that area, even for a test, more than likely a test with lighter volume too. You know, we'll see, but that's, that's, a, that's a great lesson as to what we should be looking for, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people study volume. You know, you get a sign of strength, you come back down on a lighter volume, you test a previous low or something on a lighter volume, find support. But not anybody really done anything with the trend. Exactly. And so this is kind of like new technology, I no. guess you might say. I agree. You know, I, yep. I, you know, when we first time met back in, oh yeah, you know, mid, I was doing some stuff with the trend back then. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, and you know, I was kind of on the right track. But you know, as I years pass, you come, from, you know, you start seeing what's really going on in the market. You know, panic is is the best thing you can have in the market. Hey, it's, listen, you know, you're going into a low. The, the, you know, the, what's the the, the, the worst thing that can happen is no panic. And the, you're going down. The trend, know. the trend, absolutely what you just said. To me, Tim, okay, when you taught me that trend, I've caught these bottoms. And what happens, folks, is that you don't get scared if you really understand the trend. You know, you might get scared for like, you know, two or three minutes. <laughs> um, but, you know, as you've caught bottoms, I've caught some good bottoms, man. I mean, I'm talking about the blowout bottoms, too. Because yeah, when this yeah. thing goes wild, folks, okay, you hit the buy button, and, you know, yeah, you're praying at the same time. <laughs> but the bottom line yeah. is that I, I have, I guess it had it not work a few times. But I don't remember. On all the big ones, it worked beyond belief. I mean, the one in 2007 was like, if you ever seen the 2007, if you're in front of a screen, folks, the 2007 bottom, was it March 6th, March 10th? I forget what it was. But that trend blew out like, I forget whether it was 6, 7. I mean, it was something crazy, man. I just hit the button. And it went down. I, mean, I think my account went down another like 20 grand or something. And then at the end of the day, it was up 160 or 170 grand. I mean, it was like insane. And it was like, and that was the trend. That was the trend that did it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I was sitting there like, oh, my God, I don't believe it. It just blew my brains out. And then five minutes later, it was different. It was the trend. It was the trend that did it, man. So, wow. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we, we, you remember we were doing stuff with the uh, ticks, too. We yeah, oh, the yeah, well, no, I, uh, I, I, I you combined got a, you got them. got a break coming up. That was, that was, that story. They, were, they were hitting minus 1,700, minus 1,800, yeah. Stay right there. Tim and I come right back. Dow right now is up uh, 286, NASDAQ is down 140, S&Ps are off 16, we'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oid, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow uh, up 274, NASDAQ's down 135, S&Ps are off 15. We are talking markets. Okay, Tim, should I go to the third chart? Yeah, we'll go to the third chart. Okay, I have it up. Uh, we yeah, uh, we're kind of just paying attention. This is uh, the bottom window is the XAU gold ratio, and so far it's, it's uh, still making a higher uh, market error. The uh, month ends a week from tomorrow, so you got about a week to go uh, to make this chart really relevant because you've got to really wait till the monthly close to look at a monthly chart. And so, but so far, uh, if the market holds steady or um, moves in this vicinity, most likely we won't have a signal of any danger on the monthly chart. In other words, we want the SPX to make higher highs, and you want this ratio, which is the SPX VIX ratio, make a higher high. Okay. If you do that, in general, the market's going to work higher. Now, if, if you go up and make a higher high on the SPX and the ratio makes a lower high, then a lot of times you, that's when trouble starts to happen in the market. And so far, we don't have that. So now that 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 gen- that might be a little turn today, though, right? Because with the SPX made a higher high, and the VIX ratio, I mean, the VIX is at thirteen two five, so it's going to do something to it today, probably, right? Well, this was updated uh, when I sent it in a couple hours ago. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, okay. Um, so it's not yeah, going to move it yet. But, okay. but you got to look at the, you know, the the ratio too. I mean, normally when the ratios or the uh, VIX is low, you know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, you don't get big declines. No, know? no, for sure. You I don't worry 14, when that right. VIX gets uh, yep. up around sixteen or seventeen. Right. And uh, so in general, we're okay. I mean, no, I, you know, it's good. Yes. It's not bad. Yes. So. Uh, so anyhow, so anyhow, you got panic right below us, anyhow, according to the trend. So it looks okay, but you know, this summer, you know, you got summer right. doldrums 
going on. I don't For know. Sure. Uh, I think the market still could move higher probably in July, so we'll yep. see. But the <laughs> journal looks okay, so I'm staying long on the SPS. Uh, you got a great trade on, Tim. You got a great trade on. There's no doubt, man. It's, I couldn't yeah, take it. So, I so couldn't. far, working so good, so I'm kind of watching carefully here. So we can flip to chart four. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the second window down from the top. I got a bunch of color stuff in there just so you can kind of see what's going on. Yes. But the second window down from the top is a bullish percent index for the Gold Miners Index. And I think you went and looked up, well, isn't there like 30 stocks in Gold Miners Index? Yes, yes. there is. That's, so, uh, anyhow, yep. Yeah, so, anyhow, uh, the bullish percent index is, in other words, uh, it measures the percent of stocks that are point figure bicycles in that index. And when I print, print this chart, we got about 79, uh, 78.57%. So about uh, 70, so so of the 30 stocks, it looks like about 20, 25-ish are on buy signals, which is pretty good. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be 100%, because you get 100% of them buy signals, normally they come at tops. It's too good to be Let's, true type thing. Okay. So you, you wanted to hang around between basically above 60 and below 95. Pretty cool. And we're right smack. Yeah, so we're staying in there. So you don't get big declines when it's this high. Um, unless you get some news like the COVID or something like that. Yes. You know, COVID, uh, you might do something. But in general, this market looks pretty good. So let's look a little bit closer. Okay. And uh, go to, yeah, go yep. to chart five. I have it. And, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, this is, uh, this is a really, there's a market really, more, as far as the gold market, all the things I've done with it, I've tried different indicators and, you know, just a bunch of different stuff. Yes. What seems to work the best is momentum on the up-down volume and momentum on the advanced, dec or, uh, uh, yeah, advanced decline. And this is a weekly chart. And the bottom window is the uh, up-down volume and I did a cumulative up-down volume, so it kind of yeah. smooths out a lot of stuff. So once once momentum starts going in one direction on the up-down volume on a cumulative basis, it goes in that direction. So there's not, not a lot of uh, back and forth. This is a weekly chart. You'll get some false signals on the weeklies, but not usually on the monthlies, which is the next chart. But I wanted to show you what the daily is doing. And the bottom window is uh, it gave a buy signal here a couple of months ago, whatever. And if you look at to the far right, I've got the window kind of blown up. It's a thumbnail window. Yes. And, I see and that. Oh, yeah, cool. There. Yep. You see a blue square? I do. Well, you know, the market, you know, if you look at the top window, GDX has been pulling back for the last uh, month, month and a half, or month. Four, it's been down four weeks in a row, not counting this week. And if you notice that, the up-down volume, which is the bottom one, it went up. And also, next window higher is the cumulative advanced decline also went up. Well, I thought that was pretty interesting with the market pulling back. It is. It's it showing, is. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and, it, and the reason why that's supposed to happen is because chart, four, or chart six. Okay, I have it. Okay, chart six is the same chart, but on a monthly time frame. Okay. So what this... Yeah, so it, it gave a buy signal a couple of months ago, whatever we talked about it. Yes. Stuff. This chart needs to continue higher above the mid-Bollinger Band. The mo the, once you get above the mid-Bollinger Band, it normally the same thing. It, it's a cumulative <coughs> basis. It, it Usually once you get above the mid-Bollinger Band, <coughs> its momentum carries it forward and it usually stays there. There's very few uh, false signals on, it, on on this indicator, especially when both of them give the buy signal. Right. So this is still making higher highs. If you look to the right of the, you know, that thumbnail on to the right, you can see uh, GDX is pretty much over the last month has actually declined a little bit. But both the monthly advanced decline and up-down volume still gain ground. Yeah, so, and it came and right back. Exactly I mean, what's, what's, what spooked me here is that it came right back, you know, to where we're supposed to come back to, but that dollar was going up, and it's like, okay, man, this thing's not going to hold, but it held. And then, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, we have two days of going up, and it held right where we're supposed to hold. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. There's no yeah, doubt that gets really. That. Yeah. That's the reason why I think in that neckline, because you really, I don't have the volume on that GDX. We did have a sign of strength through that neckline. And, and so he kind of came back. Volume did drop off a little bit. But the internals, which is what this is, yeah. this chart is, is, is the advanced decline and up down volume. That's what makes a market. That's what makes it go up and down. Right. And, and they gain ground. So, and the, and this monthly chart, once it gives a signal, it very seldom flips back and forth to buy sell signals. Yep. No, I so can... I'm, I'm thinking this is a, this is going to be a multi-month uh, signal, if not a multi, uh, you know, it could be a multi-year signal. I don't know. See, the last signal we got was basically January 2021. It was a sell signal, and you had a little blurb there in 2023 on the. Uh, uh, up uh, or advanced decline, which is second window up, but the the bottom window up down volume never did get a, above. Got on that midpoint or uh, got got on the uh, mid Bollinger band, but never closed above it. Here we have both of them above it, so which is huge. I think it looks promising. Yep. No, I, I listen. There's there's no doubt. And it's no. about time anyway. That's the that's the other side of it too, because you know no one's been talking gold. I mean, they've been talking gold because. The contract itself went up, but not the equities. You know what I mean? That's where we get a big score coming on, no doubt. Well, listen, Tim, yep. it's always a pleasure, man. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend. We appreciate the education, and we look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right. See you then, man. Love Thank you, guys. Love you, man. Right. Take care. Stay right there, folks. Coming right back. You have the Dow up 287. NASDAQ's down 130. S&Ps are off 13. We'll come right back.